This video is presented by Shaman Sharuddin. Back in the early days of civilization, societies around the world used gold as a medium for transactions. In 1821, the British Empire back then became the first nation to adopt the gold standard. The system was a standardized and a straightforward system because the rate for conversion of currency to gold and gold to other currencies had been fixed. Most firms around the world accept either for gold or British pounds selling as medium of transaction. The collapse of gold standard begins during World War I. Countries that used to be trading partners were at war. Two conferences or meetings between countries were held. They agreed to become trading partners once again. However, it did not last long. The Great Depression had been triggered. To restore the economy, two primary economy policy had been taken almost by every country. country deliberately lower the value of its currency than it is supposed to be, just like what happens to the current US-China trade war. The phrase means a country wants to heal its economy by worsening the other country's economy. Basically, every country tried to earn more and less on spending on other countries. This means more revenue and more trade surplus. Finally, this two policy triggered the Second World War. After every country realized war did more harm than good, now they try to fix every country. So 44 country diplomats met eye to eye at Bretton Woods Resort. New Hampshire, USA, and they agreed to the creation of International Bank for Reconstruction and Development, the creation of International Monetary System, and to renew or to revamp the coast So. What was the system after the sterling gold standard had collapsed? For that, let's take a look at International Bank for Reconstruction and Development, which is known as the World Bank. After World War II ended in 1945, the World Bank was established to finance the reconstruction of war-torn European economies. The loan only offered if the country could repay the loan. Hence, poor or underdeveloped countries were left out. In response, in 1950, poorer countries complained about the policy. In 1956, IFC was created for development of the private sector. In 1960, the International Development Association IDA was established to provide soft loan. Then, MIGA was to offer private investor insurance against the non-commercial risk. World Bank has created three affiliated organizations. Together with the World Bank, these constitute the World Bank Group. International Monetary Fund IMF. Before World War II, every country was on its own. They tried to protect their economies with policies that harm other countries and spark the war. Hence, by creating IMF, it will ensure the monetary system would promote international commerce. These are the IMF objectives. 
out of 195 countries in the world, 188 joined the IMF membership as of 2013. Membership in the IMF is available to any country willing to agree to its rules and regulations. To join, a country must pay a deposit, partly in gold and partly in the country's currency. The bigger the quota, the bigger the voting share, and the more a country can borrow from IMF. Also, in a case of emergency like COVID-19, IMF policy can allow additional borrowing. So, after the sterling gold standard had collapsed, the US gold standard took over, and it was quite similar. The two differences are, the US was the main official currency, and the currency pack to the system was adjustable plus minus 1% from its actual value. The end of Bretton Woods system. Imagine one day you heard that you would lose all your money in your bank because they switch from bank system to the Bitcoin system. You might withdraw all your money. This is what happened in the early 60s. Simply, community had lost faith with the bank as the result of speculation. Then it gets worse. After the war, the world economy was expanding. So countries need more money to do business. The problem was the USD can be increased simply by printing it. How about the gold quantity? The gold needed to increase as well because it was a peg system. USD needed gold and gold needed USD to achieve stability or equilibrium. Then it gets more complicated. If US print more USD to meet the demand, the system will collapse because of too many USD in the market. On the other hand, if USD was not being printed, how the country's going to trade? This means the economy will deflate and it may cause Great Depression again. It was a dead end. The system could have been saved by replacing the gold standard by another asset. Means country currency peg other than gold, something valuable but can be increased such as liabilities of the International Monetary Fund called Drawing Right. However, it was too late since the USA too focused on the Vietnam War. However, US did not have enough gold to give to every country. In August 1971, the former president Nixon announced that the United States would no longer redeem gold at $35 per ounce. Consequently, the Bretton Woods system ended. In December 1971, the central bank from Group of Ten agreed to replace fixed exchange rate with the new rate. In March 1973, since the economy was still booming, the demand for money increases. So the floating exchange rate system is introduced. This means if USD has high demand, the price to get USD is high. If low demand, USD becomes cheaper. It is called managed float because exchange rates are not determined purely by private sector market force. In January 1976, the country agreed to fix exchange rate by pegging currency to the dollar. Each country was free to adapt whatever exchange rate system best met its own requirement. Later on, European Union members under currency euro created ERM. Plaza Accord U.S. central banks agreed to let the dollar value fall on the currency market. This accord signaled the commitment of these five countries to stabilize the dollar value.
since USD was a global dominance. In 1973, the Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries OPEC imposed an oil embargo. World oil prices quadrupled from $3 a barrel in October 1973 to $12 a barrel by March 1974. This rapid increase in oil prices increased inflation in oil importing countries. Still, there was some unspent dollar. Finally, international debt leads to financial crisis. In 1982, the international debt crisis formally began when Mexico, followed by 40 countries, requested a moratorium on repayment of principal and a loan from the IMF to help it through its debt crisis. In 1985, they realized importance of moratorium and continuous borrowing to debtor countries. In 1989, the Brady Plan focused on the need to reduce the debts of the troubled countries. In the 1990, a combination of IMF loan, debt reschedule, and changes in government economic policy means a manageable loan payment. In July 1997, the Asian currency crisis, which began when investors distrust abilities of Thai borrowers and the government to repay the loan. Currency trading is unnecessary, unproductive, and totally immoral. And finally, subprime meltdown 2008 occurred, which began in the US.